let's talk about creating a service call in point of rental pretty easy thing to do should take you a couple of minutes for each service call uh, later on down the road we'll talk about how to close a service call properly as well so customer calls in has an issue with uh, let's say a heater first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the project that has the broken piece of equipment so we'll go under data glance and we'll go under open items let's just say uh, this benson orth calls in and they say they're at uh, the crossings project uh, first thing we do is we can sort all the projects out there alphabetically uh, we could sort it by the location which is the project name uh, here is in blue this benson orth and the crossings we're gonna go ahead we're gonna modify that contract uh, it looks like there's only one heater on that contract but we want to get the serial number from uh, the the job soup uh, they say is df17849 we say perfect uh, what's wrong with it um, fan is uh, not shutting off Fan just keeps running all right so we're going to create a service call so we're going to click on this unit right click on the unit that's going to need a service call and go down to create service call it's going to say would you like to verify the location of this contract information we say yes because we want to add in the information that the superintendent has told us so yes it's going to create a service call okay for that heater and uh, we're going to add a couple things to this for our labor tracking. We always want to track our on-site time and our drive time. So let's go ahead and add an item. Type in labor. Here's all the labors that we offer. Uh, the two we're looking for are two of these yellow ones. So we've got this first yellow one, which says drive time delivery tracking. Defaults to one hour, so we'll say OK. And we'll say they want this on Monday the 8th. 9 a.m. is fine. We don't change the time at all. The second labor we're doing is the on-site tracking. How long, how long are we spending on that job site? I can click on that one. Default to an hour. Again on the 8th. And at this point, uh, we're done with the service call, adding things to the service call. We'll say done in the bottom right hand corner. If there's any special notes for delivery, like must be there by 9 a.m. Go ahead, add that in for your service team. Uh, maybe talk to Greg. Okay, so we've got a quick note in there. Go back to the item tab. When we say okay, it's going to ask us kind of what's wrong with that that piece of equipment so we'll say okay it says enter contract information this is what we put what they feel the issue is and he said the fan won't turn off okay say okay and say okay to the value at this point if you view it on the screen Let's take a look at what the service call has on it. Shrink it down a bit. Okay, so we have the actual project information, who the job superintendent is. Our note must be in by 9 a.m. Talk to Greg. Uh, the customer here, Benson Orth. Here's the note of what they said. The fan won't turn off. Uh, we've got the heater with the serial number and then uh, most importantly is the information that we're going to print out for our service team to collect every time we are on a project we want to collect this data for every service call and our installs as well so we want to find out who the technician is their initials of the technician uh, the drive time so if they said it actually took uh, half an hour we put 0 0.5 in there the on-site time if it took an hour we put 1.0 in there uh, bill yes or no if they feel if the service person feels that this should be billed like yep they went and they had bad low voltage uh, they're at 109 volts uh, we need to be at 110 volts so they'll circle yes as a charge uh, division managers are the ones who okay these charges 
uh, the gas pressure or temperature, if you're going to set it up by uh, temperature, say you want it at 165 degrees, um, they'll write down what the temperature they got when outside of the, the discharge. Uh, for gas pressure, uh, every division should have uh, a little cheat sheet here on the different types of heaters and what we're going to use for manifold pressure. So when they hook up their manometer, uh, if this was an, um, an ROT250, we'd put it at 0 0.9 inches on natural gas, 2.7 on propane. Uh, we've got these little cheat cards in each one of our, our bags. Uh, they're good reference numbers to get us to about the temperature that we want to set the heaters for. If you want to set for temperature uh, instead, go ahead and set for temperature. And that's the information that we're putting into the gas pressure and temperature. Uh, the meter is if they have it, if you feel the meter's size too small, I'll go ahead and put the meter number in here and we'll calculate that. Uh, mostly this is for tank size where they're using LP. Uh, with some of these builders, uh, they'll get a tank that's too small or it won't be uh, full enough to handle the, the BTU loads for a, a certain temperature outside. So here for tank size, I want to know, is it a 500 gallon? Is it a 1,000 gallon tank? Are they running it off a 100 pound cylinder? Okay, I want to know that information so that we can prevent this from happening in the future. Tank percentage, I always look at the gauge on the tank. Uh, make sure we're a minimum of 25% at all times in the tank for it to really get to the BTUs where you need to get to. Uh, as it gets colder, you get less vaporization on these tanks. So go ahead, check your vaporization charts to see what that percentage equals for BTUs. So in this case, just put in whatever percentage is 45% the tank was, it was a 500 gallon tank. Uh, you have your supply volts. So we use our uh, voltmeter, check the outlet, see if it should be right around 120 uh, volts for the wall outlet and then we check the heater when it's running to find out make sure we're at least a minimum of 110 volts uh, and so they put that information there as well uh, if they need to check the polarity certain heaters you have to check the polarity on they say yes or no for that and then a few little uh, the last three are things that are good to know i want to know how much extension cord is on a heater we really want no more than 100 feet so we could put 50 footer or, or 100 feet here. If it's 300 feet, make sure you note that because we want to know that it's just too much. The reason we have low voltage is because you have too much extension cord or it could be in the future. Duct, how much? How many feet of duct do they have? Um, really, most heaters are 25 and 25 feet. Uh, some can do 50 feet. Uh, so put down and yeah, they could have 300 feet of duct on here. Write that down so we can we can catch that and reduce that number before there are future service calls. And finally, the therm thermostatic temperature. Uh, most jobs want to be 55, 60 degrees or so. Go ahead and put with the thermostat set. A lot of times uh, subs will crank it up to 100 or it'll be too low. And that's why it's not turning back on. Uh, but we collect that data on every project that we do. Uh, when it comes back to us, um, we go ahead and we, we filled in to enter into our service calls when they're all done. So this looks good for our service call. Uh, to complete this, it takes you back to the original contract. And just go ahead and okay your way through it. Okay, okay. Finish with the changes. Say yes. And then you can go ahead and no print the original contract because we already printed uh, in triplicate the uh, service call and gave it to the service department. So then where do we find the service call? Pretty easy. Under service calls here, uh, these are the ones that are that are open. And here is the Benson Orth one we created. When we get that data back, uh, we're going to go ahead and add that into our service calls before we close it out. And that will be in the next video on how to close the service call and information we're looking to capture and looking for trends in projects to see if it is low voltage or bad fuel. Uh, you'll see in our job site dashboard how we go through that data and try to find issues before they can happen. So any questions, go ahead and talk to your division manager or your service manager. Again, thank you for your time.